Hey guys, it is Wednesday, so congratulations, you made it halfway through the school week. Isn't that great? Well, we are doing Bible right now, so you pull out your brown Bible book because we're going to be going over the answers in your brown Bible books. Open it to page number 128. This week we're doing week 29. So page number 128. Question number 9. It says, what did the Queen of Sheba say when she saw the splendor of Israel? Now, splendor means beauty or greatness. So the question is saying, what did um, she see when she saw the beauty or the greatness of Israel? The answer to that would be, it was a true report that I heard of thy acts and of thy wisdom. I believed not the words until I came. Behold, the half was not told me. Well, to cut that short, we could just say that she said, um, you could say something along the lines of she has found proof about what was told her. Now she believes what was told her. Let's just say that. Now she believes what was told her about Israel. Okay? If you guys don't want to watch right, all of that, let's go ahead and just pit. Now she believes what they had told her about Israel. Number 10, what did the people ask of the new king? They asked him for taxes to be lessened. Hopefully you read through the um, lesson, I understand what we're talking about. They asked King Rehoboam to lessen the taxes that his father had paid on them. And basically that's where you're gonna write, you can just put um, taxes to be lessened. Number 11, what was the advice of the old men to Rehoboam? Now, this is the advice that he should have taken, the ones who were his father's advisors when he was king. It says, grant the people's request and you will be a popular king. That means he would be um, well-liked by everyone, pretty much. But for some reason, he chose not to heed to his advice and heed to their advice. He chose not to follow their advice, and the consequences of that were bad. They were bad. So, looking across the page from that, number 12, what was the advice of the young men to Rehoboam? Well, they said he should mock the people and tell them they would have to work harder. Basically, they were like, Psh, you think my father, my father was a hard king? Wait till you come and be under my reign. My father was nothing compared to me. He wanted to be a hard king. He wanted to be someone where that would demand respect. But that was not the way to go about it, as we see, as we will see later. Number 13, what did the people reply to? Actually, let me go back to number 12. Um, he should mock the people and tell them they would have to work harder. That's the answer. He should mock the people and tell them they would have to work harder. Number 13, what did the people reply to Rehoboam's stern message? The people rebelled and said they would no longer see David's son as their king. The people rebelled and said they would no longer see David's son as their king. So that's the consequences. Instead of taking the old men's advice, the people who have been around longer, by the way, the older people are, the more wise they are because they have more experiences in life. So when someone much older than you gives you advice, you should take it because they have the experience of having gone through it, going, of having gone through it before. Your parents, your grandparents, aunts, uncles, older people in your life, older siblings, like especially if they're like much older than you, take their advice. They've gone through this type of stuff before, so they know what they're talking about. If Rehoboam had taken the old man's advice, then what happened later would not have happened, okay? We're going to look at the answer, true or false. So turn the page to page number 130. Actually, you know what? We'll go over that on Friday. We'll go over that on Friday instead. Okay? So as I was saying, the result of Rehoboam not following the advice of the old men was that the kingdom was divided. Which was actually a prophecy that was um, foretold to Jeroboam. So Rehoboam was Solomon's son. And when the kingdom of Israel was divided and all the other tribes of Israel, except for the tribe of Judah, which is the tribe that David is from, all the other tribes of Judah went after or went to make 
Jeroboam their king. Jeroboam had already been told that that was going to happen. So he was already prepared for that. But if Rehoboam had just followed the old man's advice, that would not have happened. Now, let's backtrack. Before Rehoboam, his father Solomon reigned 40 years. Um, his grandfather, David, reigned for 40 years. And then before David, King Saul also reigned for 40 years. That's a total of 120 years. So for 120 years, the kingdom of Israel was a very strong nation. It was powerful. It was a nation to be afraid of, especially in David's reign when he was going through a lot of wars and conquering a lot of people. And then Solomon came through and the kingdom was rich because of the peace and everything. And then Rehoboam came and all of that just went out the window, just like that, over one decision. So what I want you to take away from this today is to make sure that you take your time. When you're going to make a decision, take your time. It doesn't matter. It can be the smallest decision. He was. This all came about because he was asked one question. And his answer to that one question is what brought about the downfall of the kingdom of Israel. They split so that he kept all, David's sons and all the rest of them after Rehoboam kept Judah. But then Israel had other kings. So it was... Basically, the kingdom was split. If he had just heeded or just swallowed the old man's advice, that would not have happened. So even the smallest thing you do can have consequences. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you don't wash your hands all the time, well, guess what? If you are, if you continue eating with dirty hands, you're gonna get sick. It's just a small decision. Washing your hands takes only what, like 20 seconds, 30 seconds to wash your hands. If you just forgo that. Just once, that might be just the one time that you go and eat something and you get sick because you have germs in your hands. So one small decision can bring about consequences. I want you guys to keep that in mind. All right, so I have some prayer requests here. Um, by the way, I don't know if you can see. I'm going to move so you can't see it. Paisley was here. She put down the board when she came in here. Okay, I didn't get to see her, but I just thought I would show you guys what Paisley put on the board. And I have some prayer requests here from last week. And once again, let me know when these prayer requests are answered so that we can, um, what am I trying to say? We can thank God for it. We can praise God for it, okay? I saw on RunWeb that Belle posted that she's praying for all of us. Thank you for praying for all of us, Belle. I, um, I know I'm speaking for everyone when I say it. We all appreciate you doing that. So here I, I have Faith's dad and baby sister. Um, I still have that Annabelle French's mom is sick. I don't think that is the case anymore because I saw them this morning. And uh, her dad to go back to work, her dog, Alicia's mom's job, and her dad's car engine. Okay, so before we wrap everything up today, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. So. Close your eyes and bow your heads. Remember, show respect to God when we're praying. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us. Thank you for waking us up in good health. And thank you for this coronavirus slowly uh, calming down and that we're able to open up the restaurants and stuff. And Lord willing, we'll be opening up school pretty soon again. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you please be with Face Dad. You please be with him. And I pray you please be with her um, little baby sister as well as her um, her mother as they're going through this time. I pray you please um, keep both mother and child in good health. I pray that you please be with Annabelle French's dad. Please help him be able to go back to work. And I pray for her dog as well that um, you would look after the dog so that he or she won't get bitten um, by a dog again. I pray for Alicia's uh, parents. I pray you please look after them and their needs. I pray for her mom that her mom will be able to go back to work. And I pray as well for her dad that he'll be able to fix his car's engine. I pray for myself and the rest of the student teachers here as we prepare for graduation in just under two weeks. I pray you please um, be with us with the preparations, everything that's going on, and help us to wrap everything up um, have a wonderful end of the school year. I pray you please be with each and every single one of the second graders as they go through the rest of their day. Help them have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and remember, 
No Bible tomorrow, but Bible again on Friday. Goodbye.